Tom Muldoon, just off the training pitch, um, getting ready for the game against Glasgow at the weekend. Uh, what was the response to the win against the Ospreys and what are you expecting at the weekend? Yeah, I think we had some moments where we showed what we're about, some very frustrating moments, um, but ultimately it had a real feel of one of the first games of the season, uh, little green shoots of what we um, what we've been working on all summer and then just a little bit of frustration I think um, in the second half especially I think we took the foot off the pedal and you have to give due respect to Ospreys that came out with a bit of fire in their belly they got a bit of a roast in the half time and um, they began to throw the ball around and cause us some problems but um, look we know some of the fixes that we can make easy um, and yeah look we're looking forward to the weekend ahead it'll be a physical battle as always and um, I think Glasgow over the last number of years have prided themselves on that so we know up front it's uh, it's going to be a tough one. Yeah, Franco Smith is probably in now for the, a proper pre-season and he's got the opportunity to, to drive them forward. They were impressive against Leinster. Yeah, I think um, you have to probably take into account Leinster were missing a lot of players. Um, I think the physicality the, um, that they brought towards the game was, was certainly adamant and um, Leinster struggled to get a foothold in the game up front I think and um, when you see the maul, the scrum, the dominance around the pick and go that, that uh, Glasgow had it certainly shows what we're in for this weekend and I think um, obviously with Nigel there and uh, Franco being in, uh, in Treviso we, we know what they're about, they, they like to challenge you with plays, they like to bring something new out every week so it's not just that physical battle it's um, it's certainly the, the brand of rugby they play and they, they like to chuck the ball around the stats I'm not even going to go near any of them but they they hold on to the ball and they make you work The line out on Saturday that's one of your specials are you happy with the way it went and are you trying to make a few changes to the way Connacht set up for their line outs? Yeah there's, there's a few changes obviously I think everyone has their own nuances that they like to bring in and um, I'm no different I think when you get a long pre-season you, you tend to um, lose the run of yourself and try and change stuff. I think if it was a shorter pre-season then we would have kept a lot of the things similar but it, it gave me the opportunity to change things. So, yeah, look, I think there's, again, you can see changes but um, there's certainly fixes that we can make and little uh, adaptations and I think Joyce is new to the environment, obviously. Um, I'm not sure about the man of the match, I don't know who gave him that but um, he uh, he took it with a plum anyways but look, he, he's getting used to the place as well, getting used to the intricacies of the wind and everything that goes with Connacht so he'll get better as well in terms of what he's seeing and, and, and the feel around the place so look there's a lot of uh, positives to take from last weekend I don't think anyone walked away Saturday thinking this is uh, we've met it but um, yeah certainly a lot of good stuff there Both come from from Bristol you know each other very well is that is that the way it's kind of set up? Um, I, I think it's the first time I've kind of thought about it like that does it give us an advantage that we know each other? Yes, it does. I think if you look back to the old regime of DeWalt and um, uh, Fafita, they knew each other from Grenoble. It certainly gives you um, a sense of, of knowing each other and that familiarity. So it does certainly help us um, during the summer when I'm trying to convince people this is the right way to do things. It certainly helps when you've got someone who already knows what we've done in a previous place and knows that it works, so that helps as well. So in, in essence, Joe has been great for me um, uh, in coming back, so it's been very helpful. But I was glad to see that uh, he's had a a uh, pretty turbulent summer with a couple of injuries that he had previously and it took him a while to get going so um, it was great to see him play and great to see um, um, the, the improvements he's made in his game since he's come here and the changes that he's had to make but also there's more there as well, there is definitely more. Great stuff John, we look forward to the weekend, uh, another home game. Thank you. When you knew you were coming back to, to Connacht, did you like look at Joe Joyce immediately and say, I want him? So Joyce was signed before me. Signed before you? Joyce, Joyce has been so signed you, since last season, yeah. And, well, well, so when you knew that he was, he was going to be here, I mean, what, what did you make of it? Like, did, yeah, well, I obviously have a good relationship with Joe and um, he told me that he was leaving to go to Connacht um, last season. I was obviously from knowing Joycey and knowing his heritage and knowing um, 
what I, the Irishness in his family means to him. We had spoken about it numerous times about him coming to his sports ground and he had been a spectator here on a number of occasions and um, I, I managed to get his dad tickets before his dad has come to the sports ground as well. So um, I knew what it meant to him. I knew um, how the Irishness in him was something that he wanted to pursue down the line. Um, like I say, I had nothing to do with Joycey coming, but he decided the opportunity arose to come here. And um, when he told me, I knew it made sense. And I think even Pat knew about his his grow to play for uh, Connacht and to play for Ireland. And we actually, he, he had an injury a year or two previously. And um, Connacht had a couple of second rows down and we looked at giving them to Joycey for six weeks to come here but unfortunately something happened in Bristol and that, that put the kibosh on that but um, look I've known Joycey was coming here for a while he's been very excited and um, to get here him and his, uh, his wife Lauren so um, look it's he's really settled in I think which is important the lads like him he's uh, he's become um, someone who's not that long here has become an integral part and uh, hopefully there's there's more to come and I know Joycey um, on a personal level and there is more to come so it's exciting. I suppose it helped you as well though did it? Now the fact that you're, you're taking over over the line out and you now you know this player who's going to be an integral part to it. Yeah definitely when you've got someone who knows your language, knows what you want to do and um, ultimately there'll always be some stuff that's lost in translation but when Joycey already knows it and we're just changing the calling system then it's easy for him to show other people and then um, if it's lost in translation he'll sometimes pick that translation up and go oh look this is how we do it or um, if I'm not explaining myself right so having him has been vitally important um, plus also I think um, without getting too technical he's a Scrum, he's a tight head scrummage and lock that calls line outs. They're valuable commodities <laughs> without getting too, uh, too, too into it. So, listen, what have you found different since you've been back? Oh, it's definitely different. The place is different. Um, lots of new faces, lots of uh, personalities and uh, relationships that I've had to, to grow, some that I have to rekindle and obviously a lot of people that um, I've kept in contact with over the, the five years and I think when you tell people that I was five years gone, they find that hard to believe so it doesn't seem like it in, for a lot of people but yeah, look, it, it was... Um, it's always a balancing act. Are you gone for long enough? Uh, should you stay away? Is it, <laughs> have I come back too soon? Who knows? Sport is brilliant. It'll tell you very quickly. Um, but no, look, I, I'm, I'm loving being home. I'm excited about the group that we have, the challenge that's ahead. Um, this competition is getting stronger and stronger. And, and certainly from where I left it with the South African teams just arriving into it, um, they've changed as well. <laughs> There's a couple of teams added and the stronger teams. So you look at the, the squads that are in the World Cup, pretty much all of them have URC players and look, it's an exciting time. Um, once the World Cup's over now and people start coming back to, to the club rugby, it'll be, it'll be excellent. When you look now when you came back, the, the difference between, say, the Premiership and, and the URC? Well, relegation is a big thing. I think it would be remiss of me to say that it's not. Relegation is huge. Um, it's, it does mean, like, and without being disrespectful to any competition, when you've got 10, 15 minutes to go, when a team maybe throws the ball around and concedes that last try and then just gives up, that doesn't happen in the Premiership because every point is vital and um, it is a slog, it is an arm wrestle there. So it is a different game. Obviously, the, the number of fixtures is huge. Um, over there, you've got, well, up to last season, you had 26 games plus Europe plus uh, a cup competition. So it was fairly intense when you think the season's about 40 weeks long. It's you're coming up around 36, 37, 38 games of a 40 week period. It's fairly intense. So look, it's been an absolute great uh, learning curve for me. Um, I got to deal with some unbelievable players, uh, some up and coming young players. And ultimately you're in a competition where there's pressure on you. What more could you want as a young coach? So I'm grateful to Bristol. I'm grateful to everyone there for the opportunity that I was given. Um, and obviously I had a very enjoyable five years, but the lower home is always tough to turn down, isn't it? Absolutely. And not to mention the sports ground. <laughs> well, look at this beautiful place. How could you not want to be here? <laughs> So just in terms of the group and the differences that you see and where do you see where do you see this particular group of players? Oh it's very exciting. I think you reached a semi final last year and um, possibly a lot of 
people outside of the organisation maybe uh, wouldn't have thought that um, reminiscent of 2016 I think there's a lot of young players coming through there's a lot of um, grizzly old timers there that are, are hungry for success and there's an enthusiastic uh, coaching group behind it um, so look I think um, ultimately we've, try, we've got to try and get better um, from last year uh, what went on last year is not going to be good enough for this year and that's the same every year and you look at some of the other teams we have an advantage over the first couple of weeks and we've got to make sure that we take that and um, we've been together for 16, 17 weeks now so um, we've got to make sure that we're, we're ready to go and, and build a bit of momentum and um, I think I said last week somewhere that you don't uh, you don't lose, sorry you don't win championships at the early part of the season but you can lose them so we've got to make sure that we, we keep winning um, while we can and um, ultimately you're not going to go through the season winning every game but you've got to make sure you're competitive and you need to pick up as many wins as possible at the early doors. And of course the sports ground is different too isn't it? It is. Pitch. Yeah it is different and um, hopefully the, the, the new work starts soon and we start to see some, some um, changes around here and look I think um, the support are unbelievable that they come out here and I think you you go away and you appreciate it even more and um, I think they deserve the facilities, they deserve um, I suppose the the atmosphere to, to grow even better and to have a, a a seat to put their bum on will help that as well and um, yeah look it's exciting times ahead for everyone in the sports ground and everyone that follows Connacht Rugby and hopefully we can do the same on the pitch. Great, thanks. I just one for me, um, just going back to the line out, Niall Murray came off the bench and stole the line out again last week. He was like he was nearly double the line out steals the previous mm. season. What what have you seen or what have you helped to make him even better or have you been able to? Oh, I think Niall is probably one of the the top line out players in the world in terms of what he does. Like I think you you would put Niall up there with Cameron Walkie in terms of how athletic he is, how he's able to read it. I think a lot of people will um underestimate it's not just your athletic ability, it's, it's the ability to, to adapt and change and not do the same thing. If you do the same thing over and over, that gives someone like me who's looking at a laptop the ability to manipulate that he's going to do this. But the fact that he's constantly changing what he does, he's constantly manipulating and seeing different pictures and that's the key. Um, if you do the same thing over and over, it's easy to read someone. It's like a poker player. You, you've got to be, you have to have different facets of your game and different ideas and different ways of getting to that place. So look, I think, um, we're, we are trying to do something slightly different, um, but also you've, you'd be very stupid if you didn't already hone in on what's been there. So yes, we're trying to add a layer or two onto it, but also add to what's been there. You don't throw out the baby, the bath water, everything with it. You try and add in a few toys into the bath to make the baby even better. So um, that's the idea of it. Will we get there? It'll take it'll take time, um, it'll take a bit of adjusting, but that's that's the challenge that's for the players and that's the challenge for me as a coach to try and find a balance there. But certainly, um, as I said earlier, it's not doing the same thing. It's trying to get better and better and better, and that's the ultimate goal is to try and uh, make Niall better, but also make the other people. Because if you're a forwards coach from another team, you're probably um, the first thing you're going to say is throw the ball anywhere else except for on Niall Murray. So we've got to we've got to be conscious of that too. All right, cool. Thank you. Thank you.